Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be doing another draft and this time it's going to be the inverse of the previous one where we couldn't take a player that was younger than our previous pick. So this time can't be older than the previous pick, meaning we should probably start at least somewhat high and then work our way down incrementally. But yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. I feel like I thought this one was going to be harder last time and I ended up being surprised. But I guess we'll see. Just for anyone that doesn't know, I did do this on NHL 22, and it was right near the end of NHL 22. But I just really like this draft. It's a challenge, and it's very interesting. You get a lot of cool players, so yeah, I wanted to do it again. And here we are. On that note, I remembered finally to go to play now. So let's find out what team we're going to be using. It's going to be the Dallas Stars. Jason Robertson, by the way. Holy. And speaking of Tage Thompson, I know this video is going to come out way after the fact, but just for reference... Last night, Tage Thompson put up five goals against the Blue Jackets. What a unit. You know what I always found interesting is Texas. Oh, there we go. Is Texas a place in Texas? Like, is there a city called Texas in the state of Texas? Or no. That was a lot of Texas all at once. I'm sorry. I just find it interesting that they are specifically Dallas. Dallas, Texas. But then the AHL team is just the Texas Stars. Don't even think about editing my lines. Jabroni salary cap will be on. Same with fantasy draft and CPU trades. I think we're good to go. Let's get some early predictions going. Just in your head or you can comment it if you really feel like it. But do you think this one's going to be tougher than the inverse? And do you think this one will do better or worse? Because we're going for older players, I don't think it really matters too much what pick we get. I kind of want somewhere near the middle, honestly. I'm going to say 12 again. I feel like I've been saying that all the time. How about that? Ovechkin is 36, which is pretty good. Sydney the Kidney's 35, which, I mean, we could work with that. But is there other players that are 36 we'd want to take? Bergeron, 37. I can't go down that far. I got to take probably Crosby or Ovechkin. I really want to take Sydney the Kidney, but I feel like I have to take Ovechkin just to have that one extra... Age. I, like, it's not much, but it might make a difference, you know? Yeah, I'm just gonna do it. Let's go, Ovi. I feel like this is exactly how the last one went, but I could take Malkin to play with Ovi because they're both 36. I think I have to do it. How can you say no to that? Because the next best player that would be kind of close to the same age is Chris Letang, and he's down to 88, so... I'm gonna go with Malkin. Kopitar is still there. He's 35. Latang is also 35. I think I'd rather go with Latang because we could use a defenseman, honestly, and we already have our first line center. Sure, Kopitar could play wing or Malkin could play wing, but no, I'm gonna go with Kristoff Latang. Kopitar is still there. But that cap hit, I don't know. I don't know if I can do it. Claude Giroux shoots right, but he's center slash left wing. So I'm thinking we could play him first line right wing. As a matter of fact, I will do that. That's a pretty good contract for Perron. He could be a great second line player for us at 4.7. Staying at 34 as well. Okay, let's get it done. That cap hit just hurts. It really does. I could take Varlamov. He doesn't have any abilities. Does Bobrovsky have any? No. So that one overall, you know, not the biggest difference in the world. And the salary is literally halved. So... I am going to go with Semyon. I believe I am going to drop down to 33 now for Alex Kalorn, though. 4.4, not too bad at all. And 85, yeah. Let's go ahead and sign Kalorn. We do only have one defenseman, which is kind of worrisome. I think Petrie is... No, he's right-handed. Darn it. I think Muzzin's got to be the guy. He's 33, so he won't be going down. And he's also left-handed. 84 overall. Salary, a bit outrageous. But I guess we're going to have to bite the bullet on this one. Considering we don't have a single right winger yet, Cam Atkinson could be very good. And he would probably play the second line. I guess we'll see what happens. Maybe I will play him on the first line and just have a really solid second line. I don't know. We'll see where life takes us. But right now, it is taking us in the direction of Cam Atkinson. I'm going to skip out on 32, go straight to 31 for Letty, who is an 83 overall defenseman. I feel like that's a good pick because otherwise our second pairing might be poo. So I feel like we got to grab some defensemen soon. Brian Rust, the guy who was letting me down in fantasy, so I dropped him. And then he ended up getting... What was it? Like six points in two games? Kind of a weird pick, but I'm going to go with Eric Howla. I think I got to go with Nick Jensen. The 2.5 is one of the better contracts I've seen, and he fits the bill because he's a right-handed defenseman, which we actually need right now, as he will be playing with Nick Letty. You know what? I've changed my mind. I'm doing an absolute madness. I'm going all the way down to 27, and I'm grabbing Sean Walker. And I'll take Spencer Martin to be our backup goalie. Michael Bunting. 
82 overall, making less than a milli and 26. Let's go ahead and make that selection as well. I don't even know what to think right now. I have no idea if this team's going to be good or if we're going to be terrible. Jacob Middleton. He's got the four-star physical category. That's good stuff. And he is a defenseman, which we do need our final pair still. How many picks do we have left? So we've made 15, five picks to go, 15 million left. Actually, we're sitting better than I thought we would be. Pierre Engvall, utility guy. We may have too many left wingers, but I don't care. I had to go a little bit further down than I wanted to. And oh, 23, I don't know if we can justify that. I might just take this Jake Wallman guy. Sure, he's left-handed and we're gonna have two lefties together, but sometimes it do be like that, you know? Ooh. O'Connor. Yeah, for sure. We do need right wingers desperately. The 1 million, I mean, we have tons of salary cap at this point. This team is not set up for the future, that's for sure. But I think I'm going to go with Brandon here. 25 and making 750k. Again, right winger. And also, it's actually very difficult to find someone who is younger than 26. Or I guess I should say 26 and younger. I'm gonna sort by forwards. I don't know why I wasn't doing that before again. As soon as we complete defense, I should just instantly start doing that. I'm specifically sorting by centers actually, because we are in need. Godet, Adam Godet, What a lad. 73 face-offs. That's not great. Weatherby, not much better. So I'll just take Godet and call it a day. So this is what our roster looks like. Very interested to put the lines together and see what this team actually, you know, chemistry-wise and everything comes out to be. There actually was a plus one on the second line, but I don't know how they did that. I think I might rock these lines. Malkin with Ovi and Perron, and then have Cam Atkinson with Giroud, Kalorn, Bunting, Howla, Bailey. Our team looks pretty solid, in my opinion. Defensively, though, we don't got it. Muzzin and Latang, so that's pretty solid. But then Walker with Letty, Middleton, Wallman. It's not terrible, but it definitely could be better. And then in net, we've got Semyon Varlamov backed up by Spencer Martin. If I was to guess, I would obviously have to say that Ovi gets the most points. I'm gonna say he gets 85. I think this line's just gonna work. And, you know, if it's not, we could make some moves. But... I'll say the team does make the playoffs with 44 wins. On that note, let's find out just how incorrect I really am. Solid start to the season. I like where this is headed. But do we ever really keep up the pace? You know, we come out of the gates hot, and then we usually start to fade into the background. But maybe not. Maybe this is just the dream team. We are, however, more than 10 points up on the next team in the division right now and aren't showing any signs of slowing down, so I'm pretty gassed. I did not expect us to be this good. If we keep the tires spinning here, we could easily get a President's Trophy. Yeah, we're completely rinsing the division right now, but that could disappear in the blink of an eye. So I'm still not gonna get my hopes up too much, but I mean, we are pretty deep into the season now and we're still looking nasty. So I think we have a good shot. I'm gonna keep our current trading block. I have no idea what it is, but let's just enter the deadline to see who is available. Any big names, Kadri's available. All right, that is a pretty big name. O'Reilly, Pareko, Gostas, Bertruba. Yeah, this is a pretty interesting trade deadline. But you know who's not making any moves? The, wait, what? It says team's interested, Dallas. I'm not interested. I literally have no interest whatsoever. Our team is filthy. Anyway, with that fake news, I will see you later. Host trade deadline not treating us well. That's to be expected. Good thing that we did all of our winning earlier on in the season. We're definitely gonna break the 50 barrier. There's no way we lose all four. Actually, there is absolutely a way. I shouldn't get too ahead of myself. Okay, we broke the 50. Probably not a President's Trophy anymore, I wouldn't think. Oh, we didn't even finish first in the division. The Arizona Coyotes came back with 109, and they ended up taking the Central. But let's check out the entire league. Wow! We were right there. Arizona's got Marty with Cooch and Lekkanen. Soup with Verhege, Hornquist. Okay, good team. Byram, Hronik, Freddie Anderson in net. Fair dues, fair dues. Top 16 squads made it, you love to see it. And just for curiosity's sake, I want to check... The 32nd team, the Flyers. Who did you take? Gensel, Barkov, and Miller. That's a filthy first line. Their second line is Erickson, Eck, Zibanejad, and Andrew? They have Mackenzie Blackwood in net, Goligoski, Pareko. I mean, their defense aren't amazing, but how did this team do that miserably? Ovi led the squad with 88 points, splitting evenly between goals and hamburger helpers. Malkin... 28 and 52 for a total of 80 points. Giroud put up 66, Peron 61. Good stuff. Varlamov killed it. Six shutouts, a 918 and a 246. Spencer, we'll just, we'll let it slide, okay? We won't talk about it. Latang was the defensive leader with 48 points. Muzzin, 34. 
and a plus 27 for Jake as well. Samsonov had the most W's in the NHL with 46. He played a tremendous number of games. That number is so sick. Varlamov is right there though. He also had a 918 and a 246, which is better than anyone else on this first page by the looks of it. I'm not really familiar with how many goalies have abilities and X-Factors, but if you look at this, a lot of them don't. And they are at the top. I mean, I haven't seen a single X Factor yet, have I? Just abilities so far. There you go. 29 and 29 with a 909, and then Saros went 27 and 29. Pietrangelo led defenseman with 70 points. That is a very solid season from him. Chorley put up 65. So did Hedman and Carlson. McDusty had 100 points. So did Matthews. 58 goals, though. Are you kidding me? Sydney the Kidney had 96. Maybe you could have taken him, but then we wouldn't have had the Malkin Ovechkin connection. So, yeah, I'm okay with how it went still. I mean, we're still in the playoffs, all right? We had a killer year. So on that note, let's get the playoffs started. We've got the Minnesota Wild in round number one. Sim past the first three games and see how they go. That's a great start for the Dallas Stars. Oh no, double oh no. I'm going to sim two more games just because I feel like there's no way that they win four in a row. And there you have it. Things you love to see, that. But will the Wild push a game seven? They do not. San Jose Sharks are our next round opponent. I'm gonna say no one sweeps. I'm going up to here and let's see how that... Okay, so there's three wins. We must have lost the first game then, but holy, will we win four straight to put the Sharks out? Yes, we do. Wow, we're on a roll right now. In the Eastern Conference, we have Tampa and New Jersey, and in the West, we have the Golden Knights, and the Dallas Stars. Let's in the first three games and see how they go. We take that all day. And you know what? I'm going to sim up to here because I am... Well, it doesn't even matter. Even if they do win both of those, which they did. We're not out. Come on, Stars. Let's go. Perron buries one early. And that will be a great way to start this hockey game. On top of that, it's the only goal for the first period. So we have a 1-0 lead after 20. Oh, Val Nachushkin gonna make us pay it is a 1-1 hockey game now and guys if we lose this we're done so can i see a little bit of urgency here power play don't you dare not score they dared both goals came early on in a period and so did this one strome gets a power play goal to put the golden knights up by one and then patches are you kidding me barry's one to make it a two goal lead and that might just be it for the dallas stars it was a great run though i can't be upset the boys played their hearts out, and we had a great year. There's your three stars of the matchup. Strom, Nichushkin, and Patches. Well played. And the Golden Knights go on to win themselves a Stanley Cup. They finished sixth in the league, so they had a good season as well. Patch ready point, Nichushkin, Strom. Sebastian Aho on the second line, and Hyman? Bertuzzi, what is this team? Pelic and Petrie, Forsling with Clifton, and then they got Flurry and Nett, yeah. Of course they won the cup. What do you mean? Ovi just over point a game, and then Malkin is point a game. Kalorn with 15, and then we got Perron and Giroux. Tied at 12. Semyon did not have a phenomenal playoffs. Martin, I just don't know what to say. I will never draft you again. That's a lie. I probably will, because I'll forget all about this. Flurry had a 938 and a 189 throughout the playoffs. 16, 4, and 1. Klingberg, Riley, and Gostaspare all tied with 13 points for defensemen. And you want to know what's even more crazy? All three of them play for New Jersey. Nate Mack, 26 points in 22 games. Braden Point put up 25 and 21. Sagan, 24 and just 19. Let's have a look at the awards and individual trophies. I'm really curious to see if we did get... There it is. Love that. The Vesna goes to Varlamov. We aren't going home completely empty-handed. Here is your playoff tree. The Golden Knights did not go to seven even once. I mean, they went to two, and we were one of the teams. They went to two. Two whole games. They went to six. If I... I can't even begin to describe the amount I've had to cut out from this video. I can't speak right now. Like, I know I normally can't speak, but this has just been another level. Anyway, I'm gonna get out of here before I give myself even more editing work because I am screwing up all the time. But I hope you enjoyed the video. We're so close to 50K. Like, it would be the ultimate Christmas present to get 50K. So, yeah, if we could do that, splendid. But if not, then, you know, so be it. It'll come soon enough, I'm sure. On that note, I'll see you soon.